Hello, my name is Matthias Harder. I'm the curator and director of the Helmut Newton Foundation. We are collaborate with this VR film again with Art Visit. This one is filmed for the first time in 12K, which is fantastic. You are able to see all pictures exhibit here at the, at the Helmut Newton Foundation in a very high quality. This is a group show featuring four artists. Helmut Newton, of course, is always in the core of such exhibitions. But we invited three other photographers. This is Joe Meyerowitz. He is a generation younger than Helmut Newton and he photographed in Provincetown in Cape Cod in the Land's End in Massachusetts. He came there in the mid-70s for the first time to photograph the light and the landscape, which is extraordinary. But he took as well two portraits and then a year later, as he was looking all the time at these two portraits, he came back and concentrated on portrait photography. The interesting and funny thing is that he used a huge viewfinder camera which he was always carrying with him during his visits in Provincetown. Actually, he lived in New York. He came from New York, like many others, free spirits to spend some time in this beautiful nature of Provincetown. We see here a huge wallpaper photograph, which has actually three parts. The photographer on the right hand with this huge camera on the tripod. In the background, three people, all the four together on the left side. This, of course, is a photograph putting out from three individual frames into one. So this panoramic image is very unusual. We see the photographer on the right side and himself on the left side again, and his family first on the back and then on the left side. So this is a very funny, but interesting idea to, to photograph the, the light, the beauty and the, at the sea, this kind of freshness in Provincetown. So we see next to the photographer, his daughter. His daughter Ariel appears as well in other photographs here and his wife too and the son as well. So we see a lot of people photographed by Joe Meyerowitz. A lot of them are strangers, which is very astonishing because we see here an incredible intimacy between the photographer and the sitters. Most of the photographs are taken outside plein air. And so he was using a huge old fashioned camera to portray these strangers. Actually, he was putting a, a little ad in the local newspaper asking for remarkable people. If you're remarkable, you can have your photograph taken by John Marowitz. So some of them came by after this advertisement, little advertisement in the local newspaper. Others are friends of friends, acquaintances. He spent his summers there and he met some people some of them are coming always from New York and other places to this little tiny Fisher village, which later became the place for gay and lesbian relationships, it became very famous for that. So there's one photograph, for example, between the windows. You can believe it or not, this is Mr. Korn. And he was on the way to a costume party. Joel met him exactly at that place with his incredible costume in the only cornfield in Provincetown. This is an incredible funny encounter with this person. Some others are a little bit more set. You have to imagine that the exposure time is a couple of seconds. Sometimes you have these kind of wind-blown hair in the photographs. Sometimes it's very still and very reduced and calmful. Marowitz is always interested in some details. So he is asking them to be just comfortable. They place themselves at one place in, in Provincetown, nearby the sea mostly. So he asked them, some are younger, some are older. He asked them just to be kind of comfortable. Sometimes there is a little 
accessoire with the, the young boy with a with a big fish, for example. Some people have just just bikinis on or um, a knife in the head or a cigarette in their mouth. But this is a, an incredible naturalness, an incredible intimacy between the people he photographed and the photographer himself. You see this, yeah, this tension, this positive tension between the two of them. In the next room, we have three rooms dedicated to Jeremarowitz and the series. A huge wallpaper, his wife and the daughter and friends. Sometimes we see the people life-size or even more than life-size on these wallpaper and these um, extra walls standing within the exhibition rooms. And sometimes the works are just framed on the wall in two sizes. So not even life-size. So we look at pictures, but sometimes we are confronted with a real figure, it seems to be. But everybody looks back into the camera, back on us in the exhibition room. And this is an incredible feeling if you walk through the exhibition halls, how they look back on you. We all know that art is about perception. But in this case, there is a feeling of a real encounter with the people photographed here. We see two waitresses holding hands as if they would be a couple. We see other couples. They are kind of interwoven into each other. And so Joel asks them just to be comfortable. So there's a guy with some fruits, plastic fruits in a, in a snack. And so he, he's sitting there. His wife, his friend, whoever, sitting on his legs. So they are interwoven, a kind of friendship. Is a, it's an incredible scene in this photography. We have a lot of couples, but we have as well the mother and daughter topic. Sometimes we see in the, in the later exhibition, for example, with Evelyn Hofer in the Just Marriage series, we see couples as well. So everything is fit together within the whole exhibition. This is a monographic show, Joram Arovitz. For the first time, these photographs are shown in the public space. And sometimes we see, for example, with Evelyn Hofer or Helmut Newton, we see it as well with um, Sheila Metzner, but just a little later on. Here we have uh, the mother and the daughter, and the daughter is again in a different shot we can compare the relationship of the mother and daughter and the daughter herself alone. This is very interesting. We get very close to the people. Uh, again, the mother and daughter, and then we have some street scenes. Actually, we should know Joe Marowitz comes from the street photography just using a small camera, being very quick. And here he had a, a completely different way of approach to focus on the people. He was visible with his huge camera. He was carrying around all the time in this city of Provincetown. And I guess he worked in New York from the 60s onwards. He was nearly invisible with a small camera. And he was doing as well street photographers in color in the 60s already. And so photographs encounters with, with people. But this is really different. It's calm, it's timeless. There's a, a very special process of being close to the people. In a lecture he gave at Aperture Foundation just recently, he told about the, this aspect that pictures of the people speak to him. And we can feel this as well. Now we have a, again a mother and a daughter and you see this incredible light on the body of the daughter. So um, he was interested as well about the relationship between the generations because he was as well a father to a daughter the same age. So he was interested in how they would get older probably, how they would look like. Here the father and the son as well, Norman Mailer with his, I guess, fifth son this incredible intimacy. It's not only between the photographer and the sitter, it's as well, and very often, between the two people in one picture, between them. It's not a snapshot, it's a, it's a real portrait. And he, he was looking for a very special atmosphere, very tense feeling of the two of them. Then he stepped beside of his camera, took the portrait. But before that, he spoke with the people and he spoke about the project 
in general, and then he took the photograph. In this case, with this huge viewfinder camera, the shot was most of the time the only one. Everything has to fit. So he was working with a lab nearby, doing some contact sheets. He was looking for the special light, also the special color of the space, of, of the atmosphere of this special city. He had a reference as well for his later prints and as well the book. We came to, to his work through another exhibition we had here at CEO Berlin just recently. It was an overview of John Myritz. I, I know his work for a longer period. I met him in Tuscany where he lives. I just saw the book Provincetown coming onto the market with Aperture Publishing from New York. So there was just, first of all, the book. I was thinking about the exhibition America 1970s, 80s. I was thrilled to see the prints as well. So this is the first time that he was printing all these images for us. This is an incredible honor and pleasure to work with him so closely. We did the selection of the works together. You see within these three rooms as well the diversity of the people going there. We see in this last room, this third room now, sometimes as well a kind of an odalisk, bigger prints and the smaller ones. Again, these huge wallpaper prints. And um, so we are surrounded by them, um, by this very special atmosphere and very special light and people in Provincetown. So we're here in the 70s and 80s. This is the same time we see photographs by Helmut Newton, Sheila Metzner and Evelyn Hofer in a minute. But all the four photographers are working so differently, so individual. And this is always our aim. We are, we are not interested in epigones of Helmut Newton inviting the photographers. Of course not. We are inviting autonomous work, a work which is extraordinary, remarkable, as the one of Helmut Newton. John Marowitz's work is this kind of work. So we are very proud to have him here within the exhibition. We see as well on the, on the huge wall, seven meters long, three meters high, three guys looking on the right hand, looking at themselves, um, kind of doing this kind of sport, you know, this um, struggling and, and then they're staying on the left side again. Um, it's quite funny because we see the same situation three times, but in one frame. So he had these panoramic photos produced once um, as a print, as a print form. So, and then we decided within this room um, to, to work as well with this wallpaper, playing around with the sizes, playing around with the illusion of the life size. We decided as well to have the frameworks without the glass. So you have a deeper contact directly to the people. You look into their eyes and they look back. Sometimes we have this kind of natural nudity in the exhibition because the, in these years in America and the US, it was possible to have this kind of bath as well naked, which is probably today not possible anymore. So in total, the exhibition is, of course, about looking back about 50 years into a free, liberal, progressive America, which is completely different from the time today. But we all hope that everything will change again back to this idea. So this is a kind of a remark Joe Marowitz, Helmut Newton, Sheila Metzner and Evelyn Hofer did by then. We are witness here of this different situation in America in the 70s and 80s. So we have a, a lot of very strange individual guys. Sometimes you see a person who had a, an accident but looks very proud with this incredible medical thing around his head into the camera. Sometimes we have ballet dancers, sometimes we have some people kind of high with a lot of Mariana 
There's his son, for example, in the sand of Provincetown on the coast. Other people like a professor uh, looking into the stars, doing a kind of a whale watching. We have the different types and different characters. Joe Marutz was able to catch a moment, to catch a very intensive moment of this encounter. So we are very, very happy to show these pictures here at the Heimat Newton Foundation within America, 1970s, 80s. So we are leaving now the three rooms streetwise, go through the upper lobby of the Helmut Newton Foundation with Helmut Newton's famous big nudes um, photographed 1980 in Paris. And opposite there, there's these famous diptych, see common, they are coming, representing the series of naked and dressed. So what we always do is showing bodies of work, so complete groups of a photographer like John Marowitz. So now we are entering the back of the Helmut Newton Foundation first floor, looking at Helmut Newton's photographs. He came to the US in the early 70s to photograph here as well. So he was changing the old and the new worlds, photographing for American Vogue, for example, and delivering his pictures directly to Alexander Liebermann, uh, who was the editor-in-chief and the art director by then, here on the, the left side between the windows. So this shot in Miami, for example, or Key Biscayne, as well in Hawaii, and later as well again in, in Miami. So in the vitrines, we see some original vintage of American Vogue magazine, sometimes the same pictures within the magazine. So he was commissioned by the magazine to do this photograph. And then we have the later print we were printing for exhibitions. So on the left side, we see the dance on the Volcano, which is actually a metaphor for yeah, the time in Berlin, the Weimar Republic, born to and, and growing up in, in Berlin in his native town. So later on, he decided to come back with his archive to his hometown and to open his foundation here in Berlin. And since 2004, we're here in this former military building doing exhibitions twice a year. Helmut Newton is, of course, always the core of such group shows and so here he is in the main room more than 300 square meters so we selected here some some photographs from the us he did for magazines for different magazines and later on as well for his books uh, here we see a marathon runner uh, in the detail and as well in a straight on we see a portrait of deborah winger so he later on, as he, as he did his fashion photography in, uh, in the 70s, then coming to Hollywood, coming to LA and living for the first three months um, every year at Chateau Marmont. Um, so he had a lot of meetings and encounters with the Hollywood people, commissioned as well for magazines. Uh, he photographed them mostly in black and white for the magazines by then, sometimes as well in color. Uh, so I decided to hang a, a group of men uh, on one hand and opposite female stars from Hollywood, in and around Hollywood. So we see Ed Roche, we see um, Dennis Hopper, for example, and all these pictures were published in magazines. They were commissioned by the magazines. We see Peter Beard, for example, a colleague, a Helmut Newton colleague, which just who just passed away, and who was a friend as well. So we see sometimes um, people very close to him and to June Newton, or we see people that he just met once or twice, probably. Helmut Berger, Derek Flint, David Lee Roth, well, and opposite we see the female part of Hollywood. On the extra walls, 
passion photograph. Sometimes you can say literally he took a, a portrait shot in the morning and in the afternoon he did a fashion commissioned shot uh, for the magazines, uh, in this case for Stern magazine. But we see here in an incredible mise-en-scene of all these characters, Mickey Rook or other stars, Jack Nicholson for example, or Hugh Hefner from Playboy magazine. And, and this was as well a uh, somebody who commissioned him for uh, for his magazine. I decided to just to focus here on the portrait and fashion photography in this room. We have just in one vitrine a, a nude photograph which he published in Playboy magazine. Uh, here you have a, uh, a series of uh, four pictures which he took for Stern magazine in 1980 in LA. He was using to spot a villa in California, in LA. So uh, he asked five men coming by, he used them just as props uh, for, for a fashion scene. And these people getting into the house, they were asked to go into the house by the woman. And it's all about just the fashion of the woman, of course. It was on the fashion pages of Stern magazine. And what we can see here is a fashion by Karl Lagerfeld. Everything is just composed for a double page, for spread in the magazine. Again, on the other side of the wall, so we have the, the female part of Hollywood, starting with Daryl Hannah and Kim Basinger. We see them again, some of them, in the next room with Sheila Metzner. So we can compare the same people with a completely different idea to represent them and the starness. Hermann Newton delivered pictures um, the stars wanted to see. Lauren Hutton here, Madonna, Basinger, and Tina Chow next, as well a huge print of Liz Taylor. So we see Liz Taylor here, for example, in the, in the backyard, in the garden of her Bel Air villa. She stopped doing films actually by then, she, but she plays a little bit the diva and the star. Uh, this is very interesting how Newton did this kind of mise-en-scene and created it. So, so it's a little bit like as we would look into a, a different time. This was shot in the 80s, by the way, but it could be a photograph from the 50s. Newton was always playing around a little bit with this kind of timelessness. And on the other hand, it was kind of a critique interwoven into, into his portraits he took of the people. He was interested in the famous and infamous, as he said in an interview, probably in this infamous a little bit more. So he was always on the, on the edge as well, photographing for these magazines and creating something additional, not only the face of the people and the body of, the, of these people, but as well something else, an image, which has something to do with the people, but as well with him, of course. So it's um, every portrait is as well the self-portrait, as we all know. So and having a lot of portraits of um, Helmut Newton on the wall, it has something to do with him as well. So on the right hand, on the extra wall, we see the two other pictures shot for Stern magazine. And again, the same five men in this black trunks, oily bodies. The idea of the body shape was very virulent uh, in the 80s. And um, we all know that Arnold Schwarzenegger was around with his fitness clubs. So we have a the kind of a flirting situation with the two women. And it's all about the two women, of course, and their dresses. We always see something more looking at Helmut Newton's pictures, as we all know. It's a, it's a society story in a way. It's a it's an interaction of the sexes. It's a, it's a very special tension in between the sitters. And so he's putting a lot more into fashion photograph. And we see a lot of seductive and very subtle ideas of men and women, of this game in between. Everybody would look at these images completely different. The last portrait is of David Lynch and Isabella Rossellini. And this incredible portrait is showing us the ambiguity of their relationship. And Helmut took an incredible, congenial picture of this couple. Directly opposite Isabella Rossellini, in the other room, 
um, shot by Sheila Metzner. This of this room is dedicated to Newton's early New York pictures. We see the mid 70s shot in New York. These pictures, these four pictures hanging here on these small walls were actually made for the film The Eyes of Laura Maas featuring Faye Dunaway. She plays on that film a fashion photographer and had these pictures in her mind uh, plopping up as memories of this photographer played by Faye Dunaway. So we see here another vitrine with open magazines and see him here working. Sometimes we see Hollywood as well as the, as the big ladders in, shot in LA. And opposite the, the shots from New York, another New York scene, a very famous picture, an iconic one. It's Ezra Peretti, the jewelry designer, twice. One is a very famous um, shot, life-size, you know, with a big print, and she's wearing a Halston costume. It's uh, Ezra Peretti as a bunny. It has nothing to do with the Playboy or so. This is a Halston costume. And if we go a little closer to the right picture of the diptych, so we see some holes in the dress. This is a no-go for a fashion photographer, but sometimes I had this kind of chuspe um, just to use these kind of mistakes, obviously, in his photography. Uh, and the last one we see as well, that this very famous yellow cap, which is a kind of metaphor for New York. In total, Helmut Newton's photography seeing here in that room we could have much more photographs from the US of course just focusing on his time in New York Miami and a little bit Las Vegas and especially in, in Hollywood it shows us that he was coming to the US working quite differently and more interested in portraiture the idea of portraiture we see as well in the third room photographs by Sheila Metzner it's starting here in this small exhibition rooms as well with Isabella Rossellini on the left side, another William Defoe on the right side. So we have fashion photography, we have poultry photography, celebrity photography, of course, and nude photography in Sheila Metzner's work. Sheila was a very close friend of Helmut and June's. So she came to Monaco photographing them um, for House and Garden magazine, uh, it was a kind of a home story in the late 80s. But before that, they met a time and again, and um, June Newton, aka Alice Springs, took a portrait of her with her daughters, two of her daughters. Actually, Sheila was working on an advertising company as an art director. This is very interesting to know that she was just changing the sides, more or less. Convinced by a fr close friend, Aaron Rose, who was a photographer, she took a camera. She started with her own photography in the 60s. After the marriage of Jeffrey Metzner in 68, so she was starting um, photographing him. And the first picture here, in the, or the earliest picture here in the exhibition is Jeffrey, her husband in 1970, and some of the kids. So actually, as, as an art director at the advertising company, she was using to work with names of like Irving Penn, Richard Everton, with Joel Marovitz, and um, several other photographers, Bob Richardson or Bert Stown. Nobody, as you said in the interview, giving her a photograph she really loves. Therefore, she took the camera and did it. And so here, for example, we see as a nude um, Jeffrey from the back with these incredible clouds. It could be shot in Provincetown. We saw the, the pictures of Joe Marovitz um, beforehand. But this very delicate surface of the prints she developed with Fresson. This is a family in southern France. These kind of Fresson prints were invented by them. And so she worked with them for a longer period. 
So we see other lists here on the on the long wall. We see Robert Maplethorpe, who exhibited here in the show before. We saw Brooke Shields, for example, then her own daughter. We see as well David Lynch. And this is the same year as Newton took the portrait of David Lynch and Isabella Rossellini in 1988 in LA. We see here the same person, but completely different. The next one is Jeffrey painter, photographer, um, art director himself. The next one is the daughter again. Sheila took the first photos in the, from 68 onwards. This is, for example, the shots from the mid-70s. She was selected by Kowski at, at MoMA for a group show, Mirrors and Windows, in 78. This picture was uh, coming into the New York Times magazine in a, in a big review, for example. This was incredible for her as a photographer just starting her career, just doing it actually not visible. She took the time just doing the first pictures, being commissioned by many magazines. And sometimes we have her in the same magazines like Helmut Newton. If we look through the exhibition rooms back to Helmut Newton in a way, uh, we see another portrait from Hollywood. Everything is interwoven in this exhibition. Of course, we have completely different photographic techniques, different cameras, for example. Yeah, as well, printing techniques, nude photography, sometimes fashion portrait photography. So these three genres were used as well by Helmut Newton, funnily by Joe Marowitz as well. I just mentioned that one of the photographers she was working with, as she still was a, an art director at this advertising company, Joy Marowitz earned a lot of money with this kind of advertising photography before he started to work this kind of freelance project like the Provincetown one. Sheila Metzner, who was a friend of uh, Joelle, being photographed in 82 as well in Provincetown. And this picture is, is in the exhibition too, on the other side. So everything has something to do with each other here. So we see sometimes the same people photographed by Helmut Newton and by Sheila Metzner. Sometimes we have this kind of overlapping of the, of the motives, um, oder list kind of genres uh, with Joelle and, and Sheila. And we have here again a very special surface printing technique and so on. So we see Tina Chow here. We saw that in Hamlet's room. We see Isabella Rossellini again. This is actually directly opposite the other shot of um, Helmut Newton, Lynch and Rossellini. So we can compare, we can go through it, we can see the different aspect of a personality if you want. So two vitrines in this room are showing the photographs Sheila Metzner took of Helmut and June and vice versa. So we see as well Sheila photographed by June Newton, aka Alice Springs. So we see this kind of home story. These are work prints, bit enlarged contact sheets. And we see this kind of intimacy as well, photographing back with a camera, focusing on, on Sheila. And these pictures might be as well in our archive um, um, showing Sheila with her camera again. So it's, you know, shooting and shooting back. So this kind of game, um, Hamwood and Juke took very, very often. So these two vitrines within the exhibition are kind of a, an exhibition within the exhibition. So it explains a little bit about the, the friendship and the relationship between this photographer, Sheila Metzner, and the couple Hamwood and June Newton. We are very proud that this show is like the Joe Marowitz as well the premiere. So this is the first time that we are able to show such a huge monographic show of this famous 
photographer in Berlin, in Germany. And so it makes completely sense that we are the first here at the Helmut Newton Foundation within the juxtaposition of the group show America 1970s, 80s. Sheila took the photographs um, mostly in apartments and sometimes a little bit plain air, so she was traveling. As we saw the photographs of Helmut Newton in this villa with his fake antiques, you know, this is, was quite funny because he was actually working in southern France and, and Rome and so on, so with the real antiques. But also Sheila went there to Rome, for example, and um, took some photos for Fendi perfume for fragrances. These are very famous shots of her work. It's quite funny to see the Pygmalion myth, for example, of kissing a, a sculpture, a real marble sculpture in real Rome and not a fake sculpture in California, which Newton took and we brought the picture here into it. So it's a kind of a juxtaposition, it's a tense. So we see um, Sheila Metzner going back to Europe and photographing the real thing in a way. These pictures were, were published in magazines and these pictures were also used by bags, for example, for, for Bloomingdale's. She didn't do any difference between commercial work and artwork, the same um, case for, for Helmut Newton, of course. These prints here on the wall, beautifully done, but on the other hand, they are meant to be and to be used differently. Uh, the same thing with, uh, with Helmut, the same thing with Joel, um, but Joel's work um, is a freelance work. In this case, we have sometimes some freelance work and mostly it's commissioned in the case of Sheila Metzler. And now we are entering the fourth room, which we called June's room, a very intimate, small room. And so we are confronting at the very beginning with a group of six pictures, a polyptic, if you want, um, shot in 1974 in New York. The series is called Just Married. And this is a very interesting, funny series, which is as well, it has a social impact. So we see these couples and suddenly start to think, how did they meet? How long this relationship will last? How they look at us? How they look at each other? Coming from the, from the rooms of John Marowitz and having a lot of couples in front of us, the same with uh, Helmut Newton, with um, Isabella Rossellini and David Lynch, and seeing these couples, uh, this is completely different. So this was just one afternoon, Evelyn Hofer went there and took these photographs. So Evelyn Hofer is a German-based photographer born in 1922, so the same generation like Helmut Newton, more or less, who was born 1920 in Germany and in Berlin, and the two others are a generation younger. She left Germany like Helmut, um, did an apprenticeship um, like Helmut, in this case in Switzerland, and working with, um, actually was a two apprenticeship, working with a small Leica in the early years and a huge viewfinder camera, an 8x10, 8x10 inch. This is the same camera Joel Marowitz used in Provincetown. So later on, she did a kind of a compromise and used just a camera with a four by five inch size. This is again a viewfinder camera. She can't be very fast. Everybody knows about her. She's visible. A lot of pictures are here again uh, commissioned by magazines. And so we have this kind of color part and we have the black and white part, both are very strong in her work. So we see Andy Warhol, for example, photographed as well by Helmut Newton with a Liz Taylor picture on the side. And we see this kind of shyness um, uh, he was famous for. And we see the Queensboro Bridge. We see the Central Park, a car park. Other pictures always in, the, in color realized with this incredible dye transfer process beautiful colors, a little subtle. Actually, everyday objects, the people in the picture, they know about their picture. These are not 
as you can call it, stolen pictures of a street photographer they know about. We see, for example, a scene in Greenwich Village. So this is a melting pot, as we know, probably an Irish-born or Irish-based guy. And then we have a policeman. Then we have a, a street scene, which could have been shot as well by a Levitt. She was like Levitt or Sal Leiter, a pioneer in early color photography in the streets of New York. In Harlem, in front of a little church, we see a beauty salon inside a, a bar in Little Italy, for example, or the next one is a just a shop window in Mercer Street. So these incredible pictures from the 60s, we are going back a little bit with Evelyn Hofer to the 60s uh, in New York, um, are shown here for the first time at the Helmut Newton Foundation. And there's an incredible link between her leaving Germany, living somewhere else, creating her own career, somewhere else with Helmut Newton. We have the black and white side and the color side, similar to Helmut Newton. America, and especially New York, became a kind of a place of longing for some of these German photographers, as well as other photographers. So we have two American photographers within the show and two German based with German roots coming to in the 60s, 70s and 80s. So we see here a lot of empathy for the, for the people Evelyn Hofer photographed a group of African-American women or a young boy standing in front of a shop or two cops. One is a person of color, the other is a white one. Somebody in, in Little Italy who has a shop. Everybody is has the same weight for her, the same dignity. So she was very close to the people, as we can see. And this reminds us a lot to the photography of Sheila Metzner and Joy Maru, as we saw early on. This is a bit different from the photography of Helmut Newton, of course. There's a lot of mise-en-scene, there's a lot of enactment within his photography as well, especially for the magazines. Evelyn Hofer's um, photographs were, were published in, in the greatest magazines as well. So she worked with, say, Brodovich, so it's, it's the other company on the way. It's not Connie Nas, it's a Hearst company. And as well for fashion photography, as she came to New York, she worked especially in fashion photography. This is very interesting that everything is commissioned by the magazine. So here we have a cemetery in Queens. The, the city, the skyline of New York seems to grow up from the past. It's formerly a very interesting scenery, combining more or less the past and the present. In total, we have four photographers focusing on the US, on America in the 70s and 80s, in this case here, a little bit going back into the 60s, which reminds us of a completely different time and different from the time today. Coming from the, from the rest of the show, we have all the other pictures in mind, actually, uh, which, which we saw before. It's a kind of an astonishing trip into an America in the, in the 70s and 80s. And this is our aim to confront the visitors with something which is actually overseen or opens a new light. And we will do it as well in the future with our next exhibitions. Thank you.